guys, it's Erin and it's time for my October TBR. Uh, we'll start with the books that I have to read for school because these will definitely be books that I actually read. Everything else, like last month, is a really big fat maybe and there's a huge question mark next to all of them, but these I'm actually going to read. Uh, so the first book that I'm reading is Anthony Trollope's The Warden and I don't know anything about this other than it is about a warden and a church. I have to read that today actually. The next book that I have to read is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. I don't actually know what this is about either. Yeah, I got nothing. The back is just praise. So apparently it's fantastic. Exciting. Um, it's for my critical theory class too, so like that really actually tells me nothing. Sometimes you can guess because of the class that it's for, but Another book that I'm reading is Ragged Dick or Street Life in New York with the Boot Blacks by Horatio Alger. This is kind of like the American Oliver Twist. Horatio Alger was a really popular like late 19th century American writer who wrote stories for kid, like for boys. It's about a kid who lives on the streets of New York. I'm doing a great job with this. It's good, good job. I can tell you more about this one because I have already read it. This is Middlemarch. Yep, it's back. I know. I'm so excited. Um, Middle March is a gigantic book that if you haven't been around for a while, I might have read a couple of months ago, but I'm reading it again for a class. Middle March is about a group of people who live in a town called Middle March and their kind of day-to-day -day lives. It also considers marriage. There's several uh, young couples that get together or try to get together or make bad life choices regarding their um, spouse and just kind of like how all that works out. It's also about people. It's a fantastic novel and I can't wait to read it again. Actually, I'm really excited about rereading it. And then we come to the rather ambitious pile of books that I would like to read that aren't for school. Um, despite this rather small stack, if you ignore Middle March, um, I have a lot of reading to do this month. Uh, it's just not whole books so I'm reading chapters of things and pieces of stuff so I'm currently in the middle of a lot of books let's talk about them briefly uh, the first one I'm in the middle of is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab this is actually in my September TBR but I just didn't get it finished in September um, I have about 100 pages left I think and it's quite good um, this is a sequel to Vicious and it follows a number of people who have extraordinary abilities and the ways that they're getting back at the people they dislike. <laughs> it's kind of, it's called vengeful. I mean, what did you expect, right? So the two main characters from Vicious Are Back, uh, Victor Vale, is having some issues that he's trying to solve and Eli Ever is in an interesting situation. Uh, we're also following Marcella Riggins who in the prologue is almost killed by her husband and uh, comes back as a fearsome creature. Uh, she's kind of fabulous and terrifying at the same time. By the end of the prologue I was like yep I'm gonna read this one. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, very good. I'm excited to finish it and talk about it more. I'm also in the middle of For A Muse of Fire by Heidi Heilig. I saw this much earlier this year and have been really excited to read it 90% because of the cover and the title. First of all, this cover is ridiculous. Hello Dragon and Flames and it's brilliant and the back even has the like flame dragon it's very cool it's a great cover like good job to whoever designed this it's brilliant also for a muse of fire is um the opening line of shakespeare's henry v which just makes me happy oh for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention the sequel is called a kingdom for a stage which is the next line um and it's a kind of like mixed media story so you have the typical like narration which is a uh, first person narration of a girl named Jetta. Her family um, is a shadow puppet troupe except they have a secret. She can bind the souls of like small dead animals to their puppets and she uses that uh, to like animate them instead of like using string or whatever except the fact that she's doing that is like frowned upon in their society and so it's dangerous also um and then you have like some of the stories that they're being 
told. And some of the novel is told in like letters and telegrams and also as a as a script. I don't know if you can tell, which is just like really interesting. So when I learned about all of those things, I was just really interested to read the story because I'm really interested in creative storytelling. I just kind of started it. I'm 150 pages in. I forgot to grab the cover, but this is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. It, I, I honestly wasn't planning to read this one, but it kept getting really good reviews and I started to get curious. So uh, I'm not very far into this one, not even 100 pages, I'm on page 87, but so far I'm liking it. Uh, the story is quite interesting. Anyway, I will reserve final judgment for the end. I don't know if I'm, it's going to be a book that I rave about, but we'll see. Uh, this is about a girl named April May, and one night uh, after working really late, she is on her way home and she walks past this giant metal statue that just like appeared in the middle of New York. She calls her friend who has a YouTube channel and he comes over and they make like this silly spoofy video about it because it's 3 a.m. and why not? And then it goes viral and also it turns out that these um, statues, which she calls Carl, have been dropped in cities all over the world and also it was aliens. It's more, it looks like it's going to be more about like fame uh, and the price of fame and the effects of fame necessarily than just like aliens but it's quite an interesting like sort of like urban sci-fi or something I don't even know what to call it but so far I'm enjoying it the last book that I'm currently in the middle of is and we were villains by uh, ML Rio I've been hearing a lot about this book for quite a while actually it's been on my Goodreads TBR for uh, more than a year and I finally just decided to buy it this is about a group of theater kids that uh, go to this fancy conservatory. It's not even a college, it's a conservatory. They're in their senior year. Um, the school only does Shakespeare, so they only perform Shakespeare. And there's a very like set progression of like how things work. And um, every year they kick students out. So it's come down to seven students at the end of this year, or in the fourth year. And they're this really tight knit group. They've been together for four years. Uh, they get as a like senior privilege to live in this like, house that's kind of set aside from the rest of campus. Things seem to be going okay, except one of their friends, a guy named Richard, who's always kind of been the leader, has turned into like a real jerk and a violent one. And then he dies. 10 years later, the story actually starts. Um, the main character, Oliver, gets out of prison, presumably for the death of Richard, although that's not totally clear. And what he's doing is he's telling the story to the detective who covered the case, who's now retired, because he figures, like, double jeopardy, the detective can't do anything anymore, the detective really wants to know, and he kind of wants to tell the story. So we're kind of learning about this really, it's really actually very interesting. Um, it's been compared to The Secret History, and I haven't finished The Secret History, but from what I recall of The Secret History, it is a little bit like that, in that there's this, like, tight-knit group of people learning this, like, weird esoteric thing. But it feels a little bit more human than The Secret History, so I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, also, there's so much Shakespeare, and it's great. The kids, like, know Shakespeare so well that they just use him casually as dialogue. It's fabulous. I'm also going to be reading The Fellowship of the Ring this year for the Literary History Autumn Read Along. I am actually, I've been listening to it on audiobook, and I don't usually like audiobooks, but I have really been enjoying listening to it. I think it's because I'm so familiar with the story. Do I need to tell you what The Lord of the Rings is about? <laughs> There's a ring, and a hobbit has it. His name is Frodo. And it turns out that the Dark Lord wants this ring, and if he gets it, he can uh, rule over everything and enslave everyone. So the hobbit and a lot of other people who don't want that to happen I'll put together a plan to destroy the ring so that the Dark Lord can't have it. Except that involves going into the very heart of his stronghold and throwing it into a volcano. It's a great story. My favorite ever in the face of the planet. And I just like reading it so much. It's like going home. I uh, was feeling okay about this list until I stacked all the books together and there's a lot of them so we'll see how I uh... how successful I am. Do you do you see how tall this pile is? It's precarious. It's gonna fall over. <laughs> we still have more books. I have two books at the library that are waiting to be picked up. 
uh, that I just didn't have time to pick up yet. Uh, one of them is Times Convert by Deborah Harkness. This follows Marcus and Phoebe, his fiance. I think it kind of like flashes back and looks at Marcus's past and then at Phoebe and Marcus's present and kind of like going into the future. That's all I kind of know, but I really like Marcus and Phoebe, so I want to read about them. Uh, the next book is And the Ocean Was Our Stars by Patrick Ness. Um, this is a much slimmer book than I thought it was, so I picked it up. It's also got lots of pictures, and apparently it's kind of like a re Moby Dick reimagining, which I am very interested in. I'm also thinking about, well, I'm going to eventually someday, do a video about book pairings, like books that are in conversation with each other in some way, and so I want to read And the Ocean Was Our Stars and talk about like how it relates to Moby Dick. The next book is Muse of Nightmares, which I will buy. It just came out on Tuesday, and I am planning to go see Lainey Taylor, so I'm waiting to pick the book up when I go to the author thing so I can buy it from that bookstore. And I'm just like so excited. This is a, definitely a book that I will read. I will like not finish all of these, well not The Lord of the Rings, I will not finish all of these like four fun books to read Muse of Nightmares because it's gonna happen. Um, I loved Strange the Dreamer when I read it earlier this year. It ended on a really horrible cliffhanger and Muse the of Nightmares is the sequel. Obviously it's a duology so it finishes the story. I need to know what happens! I think it's going to be tragic and make me sad and happy and feel all the things. And I don't usually feel like that with books, especially not YA fantasy, so that's a thing that I'm looking forward to, I guess. Strange the Dreamer is about Laszlo Strange who is an orphan and a librarian who is obsessed with this lost city of Weep. And then one day he has the opportunity to go visit the city, which is less lost than people thought it was. Turns out the city of Weep has a massive problem that Laszlo has been asked to help solve. The problem with Strange the Dreamer is you can't really talk about it without giving away a lot of the story. It's about national tragedy, it's about grief, it's about a problem in which everybody is the victim because the victimizers are all gone but the memory is still like literally imprinted on people and it's about fear and hatred and I hope and I think it's really interesting. So that's my ridiculously ambitious <laughs> um, TBR for October. Tune in at the end of the month to see how successful I actually am. I am very interested to see what happens. Let me know in the comments what you're planning on reading and if you have read and enjoyed any of these books. No spoilers, please. And uh, that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!